Howdy folks, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. Got an interesting one today. I mean, don't I always have interesting stuff like every time I make a video? I mean, why else make a video, right? So, um, this is the Buttmaster. Very famous, it's not really that famous. It's funny because I put it on, uh, I put it on social media and people are like, wow, what's that? And, and it was super obvious, I mean, I guess 20, 25 years ago. Uh, and we didn't have much social media. We didn't have social media at all 25 years ago. But anyway, here it is. Um, it's a 22 long rifle. You can sh you can shoot shorts or longs also. It doesn't matter. You can't shoot magnums. But it's got an inch and just a little over an inch and 5 16 barrel. 1.650 probably. Uh, and it's you know threaded in breech and uh, has just a little simple spring-loaded striker inside. You've got a little L-shaped cutout here to um, to put the striker, well, I don't know, I call this the button, but whatever the hell, I mean, it's a modified, uh, you know, Allen screw. But there's a very slight notch that you put this into, and it's, it's pretty much worn down. It's not really, um, not really much of a notch anymore. Hopefully I'll get a tight shot on that. But the idea is this goes into the notch. You don't want to have that happen. You'll blow your freaking head off. So you load the round in here, screw the breech on, being careful not to, uh, you know, put your hand in front of it. This is a kind of a safety notch, this this elongated little hook. It's kind of, I guess, a J more than it is an L. But So that's where you have it for safety. Then you put it on to the little, little notch that, as I said, is worn down. It's not much of a notch anymore. And then you just rotate this sideways. And it goes off. And I'll go ahead and take it apart for you here. And it's uh, it's pretty simple here. Now, what's um, what's kind of kind of funny as hell is this, you know, official Canadian documentation, this official list of banned firearms. And here is the Serbu Buttmaster mentioned by name, and that just that's freaking hilarious. It's hilarious at first, and then I thought, now wait a minute. Here's a gun I made one of as a joke, if you can't tell by the name, 25 years ago. I made it in May of, here it is. It didn't go anywhere, it didn't get sold, didn't transfer out. It's been here in my possession for 25 years and seven months. Um, so it kind of begs the question, how the hell does the Canadian government know about it? Now that's that's weird. At first it's like, hey, yeah, all funny, but then wait a minute. It didn't transfer, we didn't advertise it. I mean, it was on our website like if you go to the Wayback Machine, look at my website from 20 something years ago, it was just shown as a pen gun. It didn't really say it was the butt master, but I mean, some people knew about it, you know, my, like my friends and a you know, small group of Knob Creek type people, but uh, definitely didn't get international notice. It wasn't involved in any of my my stunts or anything, you know, and fired out of an airplane or anything like that. But uh, so how, and this is why I used to spread my video far and wide, folks, or at least ask your friends, people in the know, why on earth does the Canadian government know about an NFA firearm that's, it's, they probably, I mean, looking at their stuff that they've banned, looks like they went through our NFA registry and banned stuff that's American made NFA firearms. And uh, as far as I know, NFA, the NFA firearm list is kind of restricted. It's, uh, well, I always heard it was privileged tax information, so it seems kind of like something's wrong there if a foreign government has access to our list of NFA firearms. So do your due diligence. Let me know. What, see what the hell. Or what, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What? How on earth does Canada know about our NFA firearms? Anyway, I'm talking way too much about that. So take a look at the striker here. This is definitely on the list of funny haha -ha that's not so funny haha -ha afterwards. Yeah, this is a very simple, and I, you know, 25 years ago, I have no idea. Oh yeah, drinking game, 25 years, drink. So I, I guess you've had a few shots by now. Uh, so I don't know if this is heat treated. I suspect it's not. Uh, but maybe the little firing pin is. And of course it's got a breech here, and we'll look at the CAD model and see See actually how this is made. It's it's kind of cool. I mean, especially for manual equipment and shitty welding, you can you can definitely see the 
lack of quality of that well. This is in my MIG welding, MIG welding days, and uh, you know, grinding down ugly welds. Uh, but you know, it's got a nice contour. It's not just a straight ugly, like you know, no thought sort of thing. It's got uh, two knurled bands on here to theoretically grip onto it. And a kind of a funny side note of the Buttmaster, and I got to show you the I got to show you the companion too. Hold on, the companion suppressor for the Buttmaster is the Soundmaster rectal concealment model, <laughs> and again made as a joke. Um, you can can you see the tiny little writing on there? Uh, but what was really funny about this is this was laser engraved 25 years ago. Have a drink. Um, and you know, laser engraving was pretty crappy back then. I mean, it's this is like a wave of the hat to engraving. It's barely, you can barely see it. Anyway, the guy who did it, he was this really super mild, quiet, born again Christian. And when he he was engraving this stuff, he's like, oh, I don't know about this. You know, he was obviously embarrassed, but uh, he did it anyway. Praise the Lord. But uh, anyway, funny stuff. This, like I said, made of a CO2 cylinder. You can see it's actually had a baffle strike, so it, and it doesn't have any baffles or anything. It really doesn't work worth a crap, but uh, it's funny. You know, it's part of the whole uh, mystique uh, of, of this device, you know. This, theoretically, you know, a spy could cram this, <laughs> this entire assembly and <laughs> come out shooting. I was almost going to do a, a, a section of this video where I, where I kind of, reached behind myself and put in some sound effects it was kind of a and then uh and then brought it out and had like melted chocolate on it and stuff i figured that might be over the top but i don't know it might not let me know do you think that was over the top or is that like apropos for a mark serbia video okay and here's how you load the butt master shove around in there try to keep your fingers away not that it's really dangerous but yeah, you never know it's just a bad idea to have your finger in front of the barrel of a loaded gun then you just hook this back into the J and you're ready to go actually it makes more sense to hook it into the J first and then load it why because if it's sitting all the way down at the end of the travel there you've got the firing pin resting on the rim and if you drop that thing and it hit the the button it, it could go off always a lot safer and smarter to hook it into the little safety notch in that J first. Sorry about that. So as I was doing the shooting, I went from iPhone high-speed video to serious high-speed video. And then of course I went down the rabbit hole of going faster and faster. And one thing that, uh, that I noticed that I had never seen before is look at how the striker rebounds. I didn't know it did that. That's for the reason why I thought, well, it's, probably like the Benelli shotgun, that inertia system where the gun recoils and then once it stops, the spring-loaded mechanism inside wants to keep traveling. I couldn't figure it out just by the way I was doing it, just holding it against something. So I finally clamped something heavy to the table and put the buttmaster up against it. I literally butted the buttmaster against it. And as you can see right away, the Benelli inertia system guess was wrong. So it must be case movement. Just a tiny, I mean, we're talking no more than 20 thousandths of an inch because you're also kind of partially undimpling the firing pin hit as well as moving the case within its little shell pocket there that has just a little bit of clearance, probably 5 thousandths. So all that together, it's hard to imagine, but that's enough to put all the force on there and move that, that striker back like you're seeing. Uh, anyway... Um, that's all I got. It's, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's very simple. It's got literally, you know, look right here. It's got, I don't want to dump it all out. It's got one, two, three, well, no, forget the presser. One, two, three, four, five parts. Now this is made up of, I think it's two separate pieces because it doesn't, you can see you can't see all the way through it. Um, so it's got a little little breech face in there so five parts pretty simple to make and yet going to be the center of some controversy when we find out how those damn canucks got a hold of our nfa registry information all right folks thanks for watching i appreciate you thanks a lot i appreciate you you know you, you always you're going to see some kind of cut from my, in my final words because i always say a bunch of crap that i delete later so you're going to see like oh all of a sudden oh, oh hey okay 
I will catch you next time. Appreciate you. Yeah, like, subscribe, and go leave funny comments on Edwin's videos. <laughs> Take care. And for this episode's product whoring section, I present you the Olight PL3 Valkyrie Rail Mount Weapon Light. It's a very nice light. <clears throat> it's very bright. It's got two lithium cells in there. That's why it is wide. And that's good because this thing puts out a, a lot of light, uses a lot of amps. So more energy, better. <laughs> so more storage, more energy storage, better. But yeah, it is super bright. And we are going to take the airplane landing light challenge here. And you can see. It's handy. It's got a, a quick release, you know, Picatinny mount, and it's adjustable for different length barrels. Like if you've got a Glock with a longer barrel, you can put it farther forward. You can put it farther back, depending on where the, the cross piece goes in the rail. Um, very, very nice piece of kit, as the Brits say. Okay, here's the airplane landing light challenge. Let me uh, see what the landing lights look like. Okay, there are the airplane landing lights, and here's here's the Glock with the. <laughs> okay, well, I think that kind of proves it. The Glock with the Olight PL3. Just kind of makes those airplane landing lights look bad. Let's go ahead and turn them off. Yeah, crazy bright. Love it. Freeze! And as of the date of this upload, the Olight PL3 is on sale, 30% off. I've got links in the description to how to buy it. And, uh, right. well, that's it. That's, uh, that's it for the product whoring. If you made it this far, if you like my product whoring sections, or if you don't like them, whatever, let me know in the comments. Thanks, folks. Take care.